In this video, we're going to be thinking about the different types of energy. Now, in physics, energy is a very, very important idea. In fact, physicists believe that we can understand pretty much everything that happens in terms of energy changing from one type to another. So, what are those types of energy? Well, for the purposes of GCSE, we can say the types are as follows. One of them is kinetic. Kinetic is the energy that something has because it is moving. It's the energy of movement. Another type of energy is thermal, or sometimes just referred to as heat energy. This is the energy that flows when we have an object of a high temperature of an object and an object of a low temperature, and the thermal energy is the energy that flows between the two. We also have electrical energy, which I think people are quite familiar with. We've also got sound energy and we've also got light energy. Now I'm using the word light energy quite loosely there because we could be referring to the whole of the electromagnetic spectrum. Then there are some other types of energy as well. These ones may be a little bit more difficult to understand. The first one is gravitational energy. Now this is the energy that something has due to its position in a gravitational field which really means the energy something has due to how high it has been placed. So imagine we've got a book that's on a shelf that's one metre high. If we were to knock that book off, the book would fall and it would have kinetic energy. But before it falls, whilst it's on the shelf, it's got gravitational energy. Now if we were to put it on a shelf two metres high now and knocked it off, there would be twice as much kinetic energy when it hits the floor. So while it was on the shelf that was two metres high, it had twice as much gravitational energy. Another type of energy is elastic. Now, elastic energy is the energy something has because it's been stretched or because its shape's been changed. Think of um, drawing a catapult or drawing a bow. Before it's been released, we would say there is elastic energy stored. This is sometimes also called strain energy. Another type of energy we can think about is chemical energy. Now chemical energy is the energy stored in something which can then be released via a chemical reaction. Imagine if you've got a piece of paper and you burn it. Before it's burnt the energy is stored in that paper as chemical energy. As soon as we burn it it reacts with oxygen and we get heat, light and sound and so on. But the chemical energy was the energy stored in the paper that was then released by the chemical reaction later. And finally another type of energy is nuclear energy. This is the energy that we associate with nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. Essentially, inside the nucleus of an atom there is matter or mass and this, under special circumstances, can be converted into energy. Now, I've deliberately put them into two groups here. On the left hand side we've got kinetic, thermal, electrical, sound and light. And on the right hand side we've got gravitational, elastic, chemical and nuclear. Now the main difference between these two columns is that the energies on this side can all be stored. The gravitational energy can be stored by just holding something up in a higher place, for example on a high shelf. Elastic energy can be stored when the bow is drawn, for example. Chemical energy is stored in the chemicals until there is a reaction. And nuclear energy is stored inside the nucleus until it's converted. Now a better word for stored energy, and one that you'll hear quite a lot, is potential. So what we say is that the types of energy that are on the right hand side here are all examples of potential energy. Gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, chemical potential energy and nuclear potential energy. The big rule when it comes to energy is the principle of conservation of energy and this basically states that energy cannot be destroyed. So, whatever energy we have, it is impossible to get rid of it. It also says that no new energy can be created. So, no matter what we do, we cannot make any brand new energy. Whatever energy we've got in the universe is what we've got. We can't make any new energy, we can't destroy any energy. So, what can energy do? Well, energy, the only thing it can do is it can change between one form and another. So energy 
can be transferred is the way we would say that. So energy cannot be created, cannot be destroyed. All it can do is to be transferred from one type to another. So let's think about what that really means. The best way to do that is to think of specific examples. Let's imagine something quite simple like a light bulb. Let's think about what energy gets changed or transferred or converted into what other types of energy. Going into the light bulb, we've got electrical energy. The electrical energy, you can see the wire going in there. Electrical energy goes into the light bulb and the energy that comes out of the light bulb is, well, mostly heat, actually. And, of course, light, which is the useful energy that we want the light bulb to give us. So, a physicist can look at a light bulb and actually see it as a, an energy converter. It converts electrical energy into heat and light. Let's think of something else, shall we? How about a car, for example? Let's think of a regular petrol car. Well, the energy that goes into a car it is petrol or gasoline. Well, that's a type of chemical energy. So we have chemical energy. That chemical energy is burnt and ultimately that chemical energy becomes, well, kinetic. That's what we want the car to do. We want it to be moving, to have kinetic energy. It also comes out as heat, an awful lot of heat is generated. It also comes out as sound. So a physicist could look at a car and think of it as an energy converter. It converts chemical energy into kinetic heat and sound. Now, if you really wanted to, you could go into this in a lot more detail and you could start talking about the electrical energy that's produced in a car, the light energy that comes out of the lights. But for the purpose of this video, we'll just keep it quite simple. The light bulb is electrical to heat and light. The car is chemical to kinetic heat and sound. Now, it's important to remember that no energy is, cre is created, no energy is destroyed. So if, for example, there are 100 joules of energy, remember we measure un uh, the units of energy in joules, let's say there's 100 joules of electrical energy going into this light bulb, there must be a total of 100 joules coming out again. So if the heat were to be 80 joules, that means the light must be 20 joules. No energy has been created, no energy has been destroyed. Likewise, if the chemical energy going into the car was maybe 100 joules, that means that all the energies on this side must add up to 100. So let's just say the kinetic was 20 joules. Let's say that perhaps the heat energy was 75 joules. And let's say that the sound energy was maybe 5 joules we'll see that the whole thing still adds up to 100. Now, it's very, very interesting when we start looking at the proportions of energy that get converted into different types. I mean, a light bulb's main job is to light up the room, yet only 20% of its energy here is actually going to light. 80% is wasted as heat. It's not been destroyed or anything like that. It's still there, but it's wasted. We don't use that heat energy. In the car, we want the car to go, we want it to have kinetic energy. If you look at it, only 20% of the energy is making the car go. The vast majority is actually just heating up the air around it, and some of it is coming out as sound. This will take us on to our next topic where we talk about efficiency and the ratio of useful energy to total energy.